Hello everyone, thank you for tuning in to my video. Uh, today we have a Pioneer SX780 that has a weak and distorted left channel. Um, I have already listened to uh, the channel and have verified that it sounds terrible. Um, I have a feeling it just is some dirty switches. So we'll crack it open, clean the switches, we'll check the DC balance, and we'll also readjust the meters, wattage meters if needed, and we'll go from there. Okay, the tools required for this video are pretty simple. You're gonna need some contact cleaner, Phillips screwdriver, uh, a small flathead to adjust the VRs, and a magnet, it's always helpful to pull out the screws of the side of the shell. Um, couple alligator clips, your multimeter, and a RCA to headphone jack adapter so you can use your phone to put a signal through it and test. And that's basically it. Okay, so first we have to remove this wooden shell in order to get access to the uh, components inside. In order to do that, we got to remove four screws on here. You can see that Pioneer left us a notice that says, Caution, do not remove screws. We're removing those screws. Okay, the four screws that Pioneer asked us not to remove have been removed. And now we can slide this up. And I will set this down over here, out of the way. Get a clear space for it. There we go. And now we're into the 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 belly of the beast um overall this visual inspection i don't see any capacitors that look like they're bulging no resistors that look like they've gotten hot and burnt up everything looks good smells good no burning smell no nothing it's actually surprisingly pretty clean in here which is good that's what i like to see um now we'll start with uh, removing this faceplate. Okay, so it turns out we do not have to remove the faceplate after further inspection. I've worked on some Pioneer receivers where you gotta remove the faceplate and the bottom cover just to even see the switches. So this is pretty deluxe here. So basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna go through each switch here and we're gonna use a little bit of contact cleaner and uh, Get inside the nooks and crannies of those switches, clean them out really good, work them back and forth, and clean out all the crud that could have compiled in there over who knows how long. Okay, so now we're ready to clean the switches. Um, the way I like to do it is uh, use the straw end of the contact cleaner here. And if you look here on this, what switch is this one? The treble switch. If you look here, you can see there's a little opening here and a little opening there where you can just get the straw far enough in there to really get it inside the potentiometer. So all we're going to do is just spray that, work the switch back and forth just to clean the crud out, and we'll move on to the next one. So I'll start with this one. Okay, got a little bit of cleaner in there. Work the switch back and forth. Sure it's nice and clean. And that's basically it. I'm gonna do that with all the other switches and when I am done with all of them, I'll get back to you guys. Okay, all the switches are clean. Um, I already felt a difference in the balance knob. Before, it felt really gritty and it just didn't feel right. Now it's nice and smooth, just like it should be. I felt, I feel like that is probably a big contributor to the issue of the left channel signal being uh, distorted. Um, but now it is time to check the DC offset. 
So in order to do that, you're gonna need a multimeter and two alligator clips and the service manual, of course. Um, the service manual uh, says to check the DC offset of the left and right channels by connecting your multimeter between ground and either pin six or pin nine. Pin six is located right here, closest to this heat sink, and pin nine is located closest to me. So we will put this up. We'll put my red lead on pin six. Oh, whoops, came off. I will put my black lead, it fell off the table. Here, and connect it to chassis ground. Just anywhere right here, any clean surface. All right, once those are hooked up, we can turn our multimeter on and put it on the millivolts DC setting. And we are ready to fire it up, plug it in, and we will flip the power switch and see what the meter tells us. We will let it warm up just for 30 seconds to a minute or so to thermally stabilize and see what our millivolt reading is at. So far, we're reading about 29 millivolts, which isn't bad. Uh, we want to get this reading as close to zero as we can. What we're trying to do is balance the two legs in this circuit. You have a positive leg and a negative leg, and we're trying to make the, the difference between the two zero. Okay, it seems to have stabilized a little bit. So in order to adjust this offset, we are going to need to turn VR6, which is located right here. This is for the right channel. So I will turn it counterclockwise until I can get as close to zero. It's very finicky, so you turn it very small increments. Get it as close to zero as I can. Oops, went the wrong way there. Okay, that might be as close to zero as I can get. Three millivolts is pretty dang good. And uh, I will set it up for the other side and get back to you guys. Okay, we have the meter set up for the left channel now, so I will fire it up and we'll see uh, what we get. Looks like the left channel was a little bit higher than the right channel. At about 83 millivolts, I think the other side was around 30 something. We'll let it sit here for a second and stabilize. <clears throat> okay, get my screwdriver. And to adjust the left channel, you turn VR5, which is right over here. And you turn it counterclockwise. I try and get as close to what I had on the right channel. Very touchy. Looks like left channel doesn't want to cooperate with us. Oh, 
There we go. Right there. Should be pretty dang good. And uh, we'll put, put it all back together and we'll start to check the wattage needles now. Okay, uh, we are now set up and ready to test the wattage needles. The service manual says in order to properly test them, you need to apply a one kilohertz signal in through the aux input and then um, adjust the volume until you read about 20 volts on your voltmeter. And then uh, the needles should read about 50 watts. So what we'll do is we'll power it up. We'll put a one kilohertz signal through it and uh, we'll see if they're uh, spot on or if one needs to be adjusted. Um, in order to put a one kilohertz signal in, you're gonna need a uh, RCA to, let's see if I can get this, RCA to headphone jack, something like this. I have it hooked up to the dongle here. And then uh, I like to use this app called Sonic. It allows you to choose whatever type of signal you'd like to put in at whatever hertz level. So we'll get it right back to a thousand hertz here. It's free and it works very well. It gives you a nice clean signal. And uh, let's see, oops, there we go. So we have a hundred, a thousand hertz. We're gonna be playing through it, powered on. Wait for the protection relay. There we go. And all I'm gonna do is I am gonna turn the volume knob up while watching the voltmeter until we get to about 20 volts. You can see the needle starting to rise. We're at about two volts right now, four volts, five volts. Here we go, let's keep going. Getting close. Okay, get it dialed in right around 20. Right. That's about as close as I'll probably get right there. And looking at them, looks like the right channel is pretty spot on, but the left channel is just lagging a little bit. So we can adjust that by turning VR7, which is right below uh, VR5. So when you're looking at it if on your own unit, you can uh, easily adjust it. On VR7, I'm just going to adjust it slightly until we're right on the 50 watt mark. There we go. Looks like the right channel can use a little adjustment. That is VR8, and it's right next to VR7. Turn it clockwise just ever so slightly. There we go. So we're at 20 volts, 1 kilohertz. Both needles are right at 50 watts. I'd say it's good to go. Okay, we are ready to see the signal coming out of this thing. It's all put back together, uh, looking good. And I will only check the left channel on camera because that was the distorted channel. So I will turn the balance knob to the left and I have these two, the speaker wire, so I can, two speaker wire jumpers that I can hook up to my oscilloscope here. So let me hook these up to the back to the speaker connections. And we are going to put a sine wave in through the aux input using the Sonic app. We'll go through the full audio spectrum. So around 20, 30, 40 hertz up to 20,000 hertz and we'll see how clean the signal is through the spectrum, and then we'll know that this thing's ready to rock and roll. So I will hook up my scope meter leads here. There we go. Make sure they're not gonna touch each other. Okay, I will power it on. Make sure we're set on aux. Left channel. Should be good. Go and I will start playing a sine wave through. Let me go down. We'll start around 50 hertz. I don't think this thing will go low enough to 20 hertz. So we will start turn the volume up a little bit. 
and get my scope set. Give her a second. Oh, there we go. So there's about 50 hertz. You can see that it's looking pretty clean. And I will start bringing it up through the spectrum. So we'll go up to around 100 hertz. Now let me turn up the volume a little bit. Get it reset. Still looking pretty good. Bring it up. Get it to around 500 hertz. Looking really good still. Let's bring it up to, let's go up to 3000. Looking great. Bring it on up to, to 8000. Still looking good, nice and clean. Bring it up to 12,000. Oh, it's still looking really clean. Keep going, keep going. 14,000, 15,000. Bring it right on up to 20,000. See how she's looking. Okay, there's 20,000. That looks great. So we went through the full audio spectrum on the left channel. I can't see any distorted signal through there. It looks nice, clean, and steady, and I think this thing's ready to rock and roll. Okay, I just finished play testing the Pioneer. I did not film that due to copyright reasons, but it sounds great. Uh, left channel came in clear, right channel's clear, uh, no distortion or crackles when I move any of the switches while it's playing, so all the switches are nice and clean. Uh, great looking unit. Um, it plays just as good as it looks looks and uh, I think that's just about it for this video and I think we got this thing licked